Hi, Partners. Hope you're having a good week, and it's good to be with you again. Thinking about issues of power in our prayers. And uh, I was talking to somebody here not too long back, and uh, they kind of had the opinion that uh, we're saved by grace, and we're not perfect, and, and we're never going to be perfect. And so it doesn't make any difference how I live my life. My prayers are heard by God. And that's kind of how they were approaching it. And I said, uh, have you ever read those verses back in James? It says, we have not because we ask not, or we ask amiss to consume it on our lust. And um, basically what James is telling us there is that we need to have a right heart attitude toward God, towards his principles and his precepts in order for there to be power in our prayers. Now, I'm not saying that we're saved by our good works or our good deeds. I'm not saying that we uh, earn God's favor. Those can't no. But there is acceptable behavior in the life of a believer. I think the classic example to that is found back in the Old Testament. Um, First Chronicles chapter 13 tells us a story about when David becomes king over united Israel that he decides that it's been a long time since they have worshiped God and sacrificed and had the ark in the tabernacle. And um, says in 1 Chronicles 13, 5, So David gathered all Israel together as far as the entrance from Hamath to bring the ark of God to Kerjith Jerim. And David and all Israel went up to Baal and Kerjith, to Kerjith Jerim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up there the ark of the Lord God, who dwells between the cherubim, where his name is proclaimed. And then verse 7 here gets real interesting. So they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Yuza and Ahio drove the cart. That was a big mistake. You can go back in the book of Exodus uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, time and time and time again, God gave the Israelites, especially Moses and the Levites who were to be the priests. He gave them specific instructions about how the tabernacle was to be built, how the Ark of the Covenant was to be built, what was to go in the Ark of the Covenant, how it was to be treated. And any time that the uh, camp was to be taken down, and Israel was to move to a new location, that Ark of the Covenant was only to be carried by the priests of the Lee tribe of Levi. They were to put it on poles. Um, matter of fact, it's said in the Old Testament instruction, those poles were never to be removed from the rings on the side of the Ark of the Covenant. It was to be ready to move at any given time. And only the Levites, the priests, were permitted to carry it. It was never, never proper for God's people to put that Ark of the Covenant on a cart. Where did they get that idea from? It was because when the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant, when they sent it back to Israel, you remember, they built a cart and put that Ark of the Covenant on the cart and sent it back to Israel. And apparently God's people watched that, and they saw that, and they thought that looks a lot easier than carrying it. We'll just put it on a cart. And so it says in verse 7 there of uh, 1 Chronicles 13, they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Yuza and Ahio drove the cart. And they played music and had a celebration and tambourines, cymbals, trumpets, all kinds of things. But then it says in verse 9, and when they came to Chidon's threshing floor, Yuza put out his hand to hold the ark from, for the oxen stumbled. And then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Yuza, and he struck him because he put his hand out to the ark, and Yuza died there before God. It goes on to tell us in verse 11 there that David became angry with God because of his outbreak against Yuza. I think the principle there is for this. God's grace and his mercy 
extends to us. We don't deserve answers to our prayers. We're not worthy of them, but it's his blessings that he gives. Jesus told his disciples in John 14, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Not in order to get things out of him, but to bless him and to walk humbly with him and to have fellowship with him. It says back in 1 John, there is a sin unto death. God's grace will only go so far. And when it comes to the end of that grace, God's way of saying to us, if you're not going to obey me and listen to me, follow my ways. If you're of no earthly good to me, I might as well just bring you on home to heaven. And unfortunately, that's what happened in this situation with Yuza. God had given his grace and his mercy for years and years and years. Matter of fact, you go back and research the history on this. That ark had not been in the tabernacle for 20 years. It had been 20 years since the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant, and it had never been returned to the rightful place. Even when it comes back to Israel, they didn't put it back where it was supposed to be. And for 20 years, the ark has not been in place. And God's grace and his mercy was shown to them. And then when they do decide to put the ark back in there, they didn't do it the way God told them to do it. It should have been the Levites carrying it, but instead they go for convenience and ease and they put that ark on the cart. And God said, that's it. I gave you instruction. I had Moses write it down. Aaron and the Levites, they were to be the priests. They were the ones to carry and transport the ark. It was never meant to be put on a cart and towed around by oxen. It was pit men who've been consecrated by God, following him. They were to carry the ark of the covenant. David and the leadership disregarded God's instruction. They didn't obey what God told them to do. And because of that, Yuza puts his hand out to steady the cart. Uh, the ark because the cart the oxen had stumbled pulling the cart and when he did that god said that's it i've given you instruction i've told you what to do i've told you how to do it i've told you when to do it and you have not paid attention to any of those things and the end of god's grace was shown that day i think that also fits our nation we have leaderships who have given no regard to god's principles and precepts they have paid no attention to the holiness of God. They've paid no attention to what God said about his creation. They have drafted laws and enacted legislation that goes contrary to God's word. And because of that, our nation is getting farther and farther and farther away from God. And we're seeing things in our world today that's evidence that God's grace is coming to an end. I've had people ask me, why would God allow all these storms and floods and wipe out towns and, and destroy people's homes, innocent people? And I said, well, stop and think about this. We've put riverboats and casinos on those rivers that are flooding. And we've thumbed our nose at God about stewardship and trusting him with finances. We've been wasteful. We have snared people into things that have literally stolen their money. And then we wonder why God is not worried about protecting our rivers and our weather. We have said that there is no distinction between male and female. And we wonder why God is withdrawing his hand from our nation. We have killed babies through abortion and shed their blood. And we wonder why God's grace is not being poured out on our nation. We have done more things to provoke and to incur the wrath and anger of God and his correction and punishment. And then when it comes, kind of like David, God, why'd you let that happen? God says, I've given you a whole book of instruction. You don't follow it in order to get to heaven. But if you're on your way to heaven, you ought to be paying attention to it. I think it's important for us to consider when we go in prayer for someone else? Is my heart where it needs to be? Is there any sin that needs to be confessed? Is there anything that I need to repent from? Is there anything that I need to make restitution for? 
Lord, is my heart right before you? And when we pay attention to that, God hears our prayers and he answers. I know that's a pretty heavy thought, but um, I hope you give some time to consider it this week. God bless. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you next, next Friday. Bye-bye.